Paul, people who don't believe in God are not more common today necessarily. People have always had the option of not believing in God. Uh, but what we find today is a, a, a scientific justification for that non-belief. Uh, basically, the statement is we don't need God. In the biological world, in the physical world, we can explain everything so there's no, no room for God. Some scientists or believers would claim that science uh, if doesn't prove God's existence, but certainly is consistent with God's existence because it shows the beauty, the organization, the structure, the fine-tuning of the universe. So you, you have two sets of people coming to exactly opposite conclusions. Well, I don't think you can use science to prove or disprove the existence of God. And I feel very uneasy, like many people, about even using the term God because it means so many different things to different people. So in popular parlance, it's probably going to be associated with one of the gods of the mainstream religion. And so people are going to have uh, a, a view as to, to the nature of that being. Uh, so if we take a particular sort of popular view of God as the creator of the universe, who was there before the universe began, press the metaphorical button, bang, the universe comes into being, and then this God will, from time to time, move a few atoms around and, and meddle in things and, and, and steer it along. And that's the view that, that many people have. Well, that's a horrible view from the point of view of a scientist. You see, you, get, you, you don't want that. It seems like uh, a breakdown of the whole notion of the orderliness of the universe that can be explained by science. doesn't mean such a god is logically impossible. Obviously, there could be such a god, but it's a very unattractive uh, prospect. Uh, but then uh, there are many, many shades where you go right through to saying uh, not that there is um, an interfering being embedded in time, uh, but that there is a sort of timeless uh, point to the universe, I think a scheme of things. So the way I usually uh, describe this is I say uh, that you can't be a scientist without believing uh, because unless it's a total sham and you're totally cynical, but uh, without believing, on the one hand, that the universe is, is ordered in a rational manner, that, that is, there is a scheme of things to be uncovered, and secondly, uh, that human beings can, at least in part, understand it through the exercise of reasoning and the scientific method. You just wouldn't do science unless you actually believe those mm -hmm. two things. So when the Large Hadron Collider was built to find the Higgs boson, uh, they, nobody said, well, we have no idea whether we will find anything that makes any sense. You might have found the Higgs boson, you might have found nothing, or you might have found some other thing. Nobody said, when you go to the next level of investigation, it'll be meaningless. It fits in to a, a, a grander scheme of things. So we live in a universe which uh, is not arbitrary, it's not absurd, it, it is rational, there is a scheme of things, and remarkably, this entity, Homo sapiens, with you know this organ up here, uh, can make sense of it, can comprehend it. And I find this totally astonishing that we live in a universe that's given rise to subsystems that can make sense, albeit in a limited manner, of the whole. So that seems to me uh, to suggest, and, I, and I, I'm always careful about using words like purpose or goal because I get jumped on, but the, but the at the very least, the human existence and cosmic existence are linked in a very deep manner. And many of my colleagues don't even agree with that position. Oh, I'm not most, sure. of you, most of your colleagues don't agree Correct. with that. In uh, fact, some yes. of them I would suspect would get angry. Yes, uh, and I'm not sure I'm even talking about God. I'm simply no, sure. uh, talking about uh, a point to the universe and a point to human existence uh, beyond the, the daily round. Uh, and. And for me, it, it really boils down to the fact that we can make this enormous progress through science. So I see science as just this wonderful thing that we do, and we do it so well, we take it for granted. But the fact that it works, the fact that we're connected in to the deep principles of the universe that are hidden from us in daily life, I think is truly astonishing and, and, and is a, the, the most significant fact about science. The, the most significant scientific fact is that science actually works. Mm. So if you look at this sometimes uh, acerbic debate between militant atheists and uh, uh, strong believing uh, theists who, who are scientists, right. all of whom right. are scientists or, or philosophers, um, uh, I, I would think you would wish a pox on both of them. I do. I, th I find the debate uh, very shallow, very silly, uh, and has degenerated into something like a slanging match. Uh, because, you know, of course I agree 
with my atheist colleagues if what they're talking about is some cosmic magician type of god that is the god of popular religion. You know, I'm very definitely on their side. Uh, but then I switch sides when they say, uh, therefore, based on science, we can say that there is no point to the universe, there is no point to human existence. And, you know, they, get, they go the whole way down that path. So I do say a pox on both your houses. Uh, the, the scientific view would be that, um, that you are uh, engaged in wishful thinking, that you would like there to be a purpose about things, but that there is no evidence of such. The laws of physics uh, have no uh, script with them. There's no, uh, there's no end goal of the laws of physics. They are what they are, produce a lot of stuff, uh, most of which crashes around. And occasionally there's an accident that uh, produces what we find here on Earth. That's the typical argument. It is the, the typical argument. And I, I see no reason why uh, supporting the position that I've just outlined uh, uh, cannot be pursued through the scientific method. In other words, I don't think that this is an argument that's condemned to just be uh, armchair philosophy or a gut feeling, you say wishful thinking. Uh, well, um, it doesn't have to be confined to wishful thinking because it's something that we can actually investigate because the ability of human beings to decode nature through the scientific method, through the application of mathematics, is something that itself can be studied. And if we should find that there are intelligent beings elsewhere in the universe, uh, then uh, w one of the tests is that the emergence of life and mind and the knowability of the universe are part and parcel of this uh, directional trend. So these are things which, in principle at least, uh, can be tested. Uh, of course, uh, there's wishful thinking. The atheists uh, wish that there's no God or, or no purpose in the universe. Everybody's guided by their, their own uh, wishful thinking, aren't they?